Okay. <clears throat> so we, um, we began an exploration of um, of Chuva last uh, last week, and we saw uh, a very extraordinary thing, and that is that. Uh, whereas uh, we're used to perhaps seeing tshuva as being a, a response to something that um, something that we face in ourselves, something that we face in um, in terms of uh, who we have become and the way we've been acting. Um, there's a, um, a distinction in um, in pnimiuta Torah. Between and also really in the neglot of Torah, between that type of tshuva, which is um, in a sense a, a localized and um, specified tshuva to a particular circumstance that that uh, that I've actually already stepped into, and now I need to respond to, um, and a different level of tshuva, which is um, more primary, more in a sense, uh, primal, and that is what's uh, called tshuva uh, ila'a in the Sfarim, and in Chazal is called the tshuva shekat malolam. There's a tshuva that, that actually precedes the creation of the world. It's here before there is anything. Um, and that level of tshuva is a, um, is a uh, phenomenon, or a, uh, is, as, as we saw, more more powerfully last time is actually like an urge that uh, underlies all of the all of the movements and all of the vagaries and all of the uh, developments of creation as being its 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 root source, um, its uh, most primary um, push and movement, and that chuva is something which um, which uh, we saw kabbalistically is. Is described um, in alignment with uh, as being as being aligned with or coming out of the sphira called bina, which um, which uh, in terms of our own experience is the ability to to uh, derive one thing from the next, to move ahead, um, and to uh, uh, and to unfold by, in, in terms of intellectual powers, by deduction, but in terms of, um, in terms of personality, by, by having a drive to, to develop things beyond where they are and to move them into, into, their, next, um, into their next evolved level. And that, um, that meaning of tshuva is not uh, tshuva as a response or reaction to something that, that already is, but rather is a, um, is a description for us who already live within the world of a possibility of returning to there, to that um, pristine uh, reality in which uh, there is not yet all of the different circumstances that we're facing and living in, but rather there's something which is more primal and primary that is, that is there um, uh, before life begins to unfold into its different expressions and parts, and that we have the possibility of returning to there and of moving, um, moving our uh, consciousness to a, a level that's able to, to uh, reconnect to that most uh, primal uh, uh, reality of ourselves. That is, that is the higher level of tshuva, which is not a response to what has become of us, but rather is an ability to return to uh, whatever sense there is of who we are before, before we be, began becoming, um, that we can return to that, is, uh, is the tshuva ila, the higher level of tshuva. And that level of tshuva is something which really very much rests in the realm of awareness, and um, and um, and uh, this this um, uh, very um, very much uh, a, the unique human capacity to 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 literally to rise above ourselves, to rise above ourselves, and to see things from from outside, 
our world as it has become our world. <clears throat> and this is something which, um, which we, which we, which we um, experience all the time. Um, I'm, perhaps not all the time, but at times of trial, at times uh, of struggle, sometimes at times of, of great um, accomplishment, times of contemplation. Um, this, this, this past week I was, I was working with someone who, um, who it was actually was, yeah, it was this past week, working with someone who, who's been living a marriage that is just absolute misery. 20 years, 20 years, been living in marriage. He came to the chuppah. He told me he came to the chuppah just um, after having had a beautiful courtship with this, with, with this woman who he married. He saw all her vivaciousness and all of her aliveness and going out together. And they're just like, you know, he's just so taken by her and he's telling her all his greatest divrei Torah and his learning is strong and 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 she's seeing him in that and he's seeing her the way he's seeing her and and then after they got engaged and this is this is not so uh rare right that after they got engaged like i tell people once when you're in courtship like the the, the pounding of the heart is yes 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 <laughs> but after you get engaged the only the only thing to think about is no 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 <laughs> Because there's no there's no need to say yes anymore. You already said yes, so the only option that's left now is to say no. So some people end up in their in their Ewing period, in their engagement period, just like no, no, no. So she went into the no, 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 and he's he spent the 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 um, the, the months I think before they actually got married trying to reignite her desire to say yes. You know, finally, she he said she turned around. You know, especially after she went to the mikveh, he said she just like came out totally yes, and he was completely worn out by the time he got to the chuppah. He was just completely worn out, mm -hmm. and entered into the the relationship, uh, resenting her, angry with her, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And this has be become the pattern. It was mamish like set as the you know what you would say sort of the neural pattern of the of the connection between them. It's just like so. This is so he's like blaming it all on this. As as we continue our process together, um, it really doesn't take much to uncover a whole lot of other baggage that's underneath and other other formatting that's actually setting the stage for this. Um, by the second session, with just some deep breathing and uh, emoting and uh, sentence fragments of like an. My childhood was miserable, and my house was full of arguments. This is him finishing the sentences. You know, it became clearer and clearer that that actually what has happened is he has recreated the environment which he's comfortable with. Mm. He's basically living the same argumentative house, and and um, and the acidic relationship. That he saw between his parents, that was between the siblings in the house. He's just, it wasn't that the circumstances of him having gotten tired out over the course of the engagement meant that he now entered into this relationship angry and resentful, and therefore it's this. This is, this is really what he knows. This is what he knows. And there was a moment during the course of the courtship, moments, enough moments during the course of the courtship for her to become the image of this wish fulfillment for him that things could really be different. So, so, um, so here he is, crushed by this, and feeling trapped by it. Right? This is like stage two. He's like trapped by it. This is like this is his, uh, this is where analysis takes you. You know. So like, yeah, so, wow, I can't, I can't believe it. This is. At this point, he's in the realm of goral. You know, it's just like fate. He's fated this way. It's it's his it's his it's his reality. You know, it's his reality from childhood. It's reality, and it's just reality continuing. So, so, um, so stage three, right? Again, all these take right moments. You know, but stage three is like ask, yes, and how would you like it to be? How would you like it to be? 
after crying, after catharting, after mourning, how he's responsible. It's 20, mom is 20 years. It's, it's, I'm not going to say how many children, but it's, and they're hurt, and the kids are hurting. And there's, I mean, it's just like, it's, it's just been a house of, 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 of misery, the way he describes it. 20, 20 years, that's a long time. That's a long time. And how would you like it to be? And how would you like it to be? How would you like it to be? Let's take a deep breath. And like, how would you like it to be? And it really takes a deep breath because it takes a, um, a nishima, a deep breathing, which returns one to a nashama, to like some level of, of a first, first um, um, realm of, of purity of that first ruach elukim rachefet, where it's still hovering above the tahomos that are, that are down there, <laughs> which Chazal say, you know, the choshech up the tahomos, like all the galuyos are down there, but there's a ruach elukim, which is a wind, which is hovering above all of those, all of those um, dis- despairing entrapments, you know, it's like there, she just breathed it in, breathed it in. What do you see? I see us looking into each other's eyes. I see us caring. I see us vulnerable to each other and, and not afraid. I see a, a, most, a most marvelous vision of what can be. Just, not only what can be, but what actually is in his, in his deepest being. It's not a what can be. It's it's a what is so accessible to him, so accessible to him that it just took Mamish, we're talking about uh, a few hours, you know, um, of of uh, releasing from 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 the entrapment by by releasing from all of the emotional baggage that's that's with that entrapment that allows him to see again not what could be, but really deeply, a uh, really deeply. Uh, uh, and profoundly, what is? What do I mean? What is? What is on the level of what is the depths of his image that he has of what his life is? Not is in the manifest reality, but is in the deepest f- format and mapping of his selfhood that's within him. It's there. And you look at you look at you look at that, and um, and you mamish like you wonder at it. Wonder in the sense of pele. You wonder at it. It's like how, after twenty years, is this man still able to, after just some deep breathing and crying, able to still say? This is what my marriage can be. How the heck is that possible? We really need to appreciate how extraordinary that is to completely step outside of everything, everything, including his upbringing, including the way he's created his own home and is willing to now, after, you know, years of blaming her, willing to take responsibility for that. That's the lower level truth of responsibility, respond to it, etc., etc., and to and to work to change it. But 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 to still be able to access and return to some something that is apparently just imprinted on the nature of who he is and all of us are. And to see that that picture, that is the levels of Bina, and especially the way in the Kabbalistic teachings, the way that Keter is mitgale davka bebina, atika itgalia bebina, is the, is the Lashon of the Zohar, that atika, which is the transcendent, the transcendent, atik, right, by atik, oh hello, he moved it, that it's, it's ne'etak, it's also ancient, but the, but the atik yomin, but the main meaning of it is transcendent, is able to mimit gale in the bina because the bina is the function that we can utilize to step out and say something can come of this and therefore there is a deeper root to this 
than the way it is currently manifesting in reality, to touch that and, um, and to really raise this possibility, you know, as, as um, uh, it's a wondrous thing. It's a wondrous thing. I don't want to even like soil it by saying I can, he can wonder. It's just, you just look at that and just, it's just a pillar. It's a pillar that such a thing is possible for a human being. And there is, it's like, you know, with tears coming down his, his face like this, it really can be, and it can be, and they're going to make it. They're going to make it. And the reason they're going to make it, the reason they're going to make it is because this is the deep imprint that, um, that he knows and resonates with, and he can do it. And the reason he can do it is because it's become so powerful for him, this vision, that it will, it will manifest Bli ayin hara, poo poo poo, you know, I'm talking to people and like, but you don't know who it is, and so you can't give them an ayin hara. <laughs> but, no, it's like, it's scary, you know, because it's very delicate processes. These are real things. It's not, it's not a story. But I, I am so convinced, you know, so, I am certain. And the reason is because this is the deep imprint, and he has touched the place that we're describing now, which is chuva ila, which is primal vision, primal will, a primal identity which precedes all of the, the garbage which later becomes the way in which our neural pathways end up organizing themselves based on what they become familiar with. That remains changeable, and you know how it, we know it remains changeable because there remains incredibly, incredibly, beyond the way your brain works and has been, you know, has been, uh, you know, because it's pl a plastic phenomenon, has been molded to work by virtue of the circumstances you grew up in. Beyond that, there's some, something in there that's able to look at that and say, but I don't like this. I'm sick of this. I'm dis I despise this. I mean, these are Lashanos that, that later we'll see in Rabbi Aaron Alevi, Bezat Hashem, when we get there. I, just, I, I, I despise that. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm more than angry at it. I'm fiercely, uh, fiercely the enemy of my own life. How are you fiercely the enemy? So who are you that is standing in enmity to his life? And these are levels that the Tanya describes and that the, the Rabbi Amar Levi describes. And the Isa B'chayim is like disgusted by it. Disgusted by it. So you let him go and be disgusted by it until, until you pop the question and just exactly who is disgusted by his life? <laughs> who is being disgusted by his life right now? I thought it was your life that you're disgusted by, but apparently there's something even more alive in you than your life. And that more alive in you than your life is the olam haba that exists within you, which is the realm of tshuva. That's preceding the manifestation of Ola. That's why in the Kabbalah, Bina is both Tshuva and Olam Haba. How is Tshuva Olam Haba, man? Olam Haba is that which is going to come, no? No. No. Mamish not. Olam Haba, Olam Haba is what is. It's it is coming all the time. It's coming all the time because it is able at any moment to penetrate the reality which is the construct that you currently live with the higher imprature of the nature of who you are. And everyone has a chilek in Olam Haba. Not everyone is zochet to his chilek in Olam Haba. You might pass through this life and need to come back again because you missed your chilek in Olam Haba because you didn't, you didn't rip open the garbage pail of, of your life as you're living it to expose the, 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 uh, the indestructible diamond of the, of, the, of, the, of the vision of what it is that you can be. You might not have done that. You're gonna, you'll have to come back and do it again. Okay, saying, you know, God is very patient. You might not be. <laughs> God is very patient. Shnaim Shalosh, Radim Gaver. Kubalim say you get two, three times. Hopefully that's enough. It's, you know, two hundred and ten years. That's can I get the two hundred ten years in Mitzrayim? Get 
three seventy year spans, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All this kind of stuff is it's for real, guys. It's for real, <laughs> you know, because because there is this indestructible spirit that's within you, this indestructible wind that's within you, that's breath of life, that is an imperature of a design of much more deeply who you are, the me, the who, which is the other name, another name for Bina, that is the absolute. And it's not, okay, that, no, you hear this, I mean, so, so here it is, right, here, here he is, right, at this point, uh, this gentleman, at this point, at this point of this, of this higher tshuva, in which he is now uh, aligned with, resonating with, excited by this other possibility, which he'd really, it's not, it, I wouldn't even say he'd given up on, he, had, he hadn't even thought about it, it takes sometimes someone to help you to re-expose that, as not only as a possibility, but as the truth of who you are. Um, and um, there's, there's uh, myriad ways, right, in which this, this, um, this expresses itself, right? But right now, for us, it's important to recognize and to identify that this is really, this is really where Olam Haba, and the Olam Haba that is ours, is awaiting us. It's awaiting us underneath all of those, 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 um, the crusted levels of things which seem to be just the way things are because that's the way my life has been uh, molded by the circumstances I live. That place is the deeper aspect of the Eheye that we described last week. Because when Moshe Rabbeinu asked, Mi anochi ke'elech el paro, and God answers him, Eheye imach, Eheye imach. Which then later he tells Moshe, that, that's the name, that's not just, I'm going to be with you, but Eheye is with you always. That Eheye power, now we're seeing, is not just, not just the, the power to evolve into something else. The, 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 the impulse to move forward that we saw it to be last time, which is indestructible as long as you're able to say it, eh, hey, yeah, that I will be, then nothing can hold you down from that. But it's deeper than that. That eh, hey, yeah, is actually, is, is being guided by a vision and a will, which is a divine vision and will for the things that we can enumerate, for, for love, for connection, for intimacy, for being known, for knowing, for, for, for being realized in a way that is uh, inclusive of other involving in yichud, Etc. Etc. And all the things that we might we might delineate, but you see that that there's a it's not just a raw movement towards realization and manifestation. There's there's a there's a there's a there's a map in there. There's a pattern in there. It's not a map and pattern that tells you okay, so you should take this job as opposed to that job. Sorry, guys, <laughs> it doesn't always decide those issues. It's a context in which there's a, uh, a, a yearning for within which and within which that context all kinds of things are possible that you might choose as long as they are guided by that, that vision which comes from Bina, which comes from Kadmala Olam. You hear this? You hear this? This is, this is something, by the way, very deeply Nerumas in, in, in last week's parsha, right? I mean, this is the big parsha, right? you know, Nitzav and Mav. Mamish, this is, this is what it means to be Nitzav, what I'm describing to you. Is to, this kind of a ability to stand in a vertical, um, upright position, which is a description. I mean, this is, this is, it, it's, it's, it's a very unusual lushan that Moshe Rabbeinu uses, a Tem Nitzavim Hayom. 
אתם כולכם, what do you mean ניצבים? what does that mean ניצבים? Like, uh, אתם עומדים, אתם נמצאים, אתם ניצבים. You are ניצב, you're like standing at a 90 degree angle to the ground. You are upright. And I want to tell you something, Moshe Rabbeinu says, I want to tell you something. This is a reality of ניצב, which extends through all levels of humanity. Rasheichem, Shiftechem, Ziknechem, Shotrechem, Chotev Meimecha. It doesn't matter. You're on the lowest level of, 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 of reality. We don't have caste systems by us people. So you can't excuse yourself for being stuck. It doesn't matter what, what level you are. We live Nitzavim. Kulchem. It doesn't matter. You might be a Shifcha, you might be an Evid. It makes no difference. You're a human being. You are Nitzav. And let me tell you something, Moshe Rabbeinu says, like, you know, it's, it's his dying day. It's the final words of Moshe Rabbeinu. And it's, it's, it's got to be that way. Maybe we'll, get, maybe we'll get back to that next time. It's gotta, but it's got to be that way. On his, it's, it's his final day. He's touching Olam Abba now, the way that it's after you leave the world. And he tells them, you know, there's all kinds of stuff you're going to face. There's all kinds of stuff you're going to face. And there's all kinds of events that, you know, one thing leads to the next. I know it. But I want to tell you something. Not the hidden things. I mean, they are the hidden things. But the deeper thing, the power to smash things. Hmm. The power to smash things. To smash the... the, the um, chaining of events of your life because that's the way you grew up of your reality because that's the way people treated you and that's the way you learned to respond you, they could all be smashed you want to talk about the you want to talk about you know the way you're used to living in the local sense of your personal reality as you've come to know it fine that will go on forever But Hanistaros, the power to undo all of that, the Ruach Elokim HaMerachefet Al Pnei HaMayim, the Neshama, that's, that's, the, that's the Olam Haba, that is Davik in God, you can smash it all. And you can. You really, you really have that power. But, I mean, it's, it's work. And, you know, it's not, then, then it's done. By no means. But... That's the only possibility for then Moshe Rabbeinu introducing what he introduces in the next psukim, which is for the very first time, <laughs> incredible, the day he dies, for the very first time introduces to them the possibility of v'shavda ad Hashem Elokecha. You can go all the way back to God, your God, your personal God, Elokecha, not Elokechem. And by the way, The entire parish is that way. It's all about Yochid. He's going to be a guy. He's going to say this and he's going to do that. It's not about the... No, it's about one guy. It's about you. It's about you. It's about you. Hashem Levavo Pone Hayo. Shav Levavo. Levavo. Which is, by the way, the number... Right, you probably saw... I hope you saw that in the Simanim. I hope you read the Simanim at the end of the parish of how many psukim there are. It's Gematria Levavo. <laughs> it's the Gematria of the number of psukim that are in Parshas Nitzav. Because <laughs> it's his heart, man. It's like, you know, it's about, it's about where you're going to put the heart. The lave in the Kabbalah is Bina. It's the extension of the, of the mind down into the heart. It's the connection between them. Okay. But the, but the, but the, um, but the introduction of tshuva comes by virtue of this Nistarot element. But, but it's, 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 it's really deeper than we've been imagining it in the past. This is root identity. This is olam haba in the deepest sense of what it is that your chalik is that is a vision that you can reattach to. That's the deepest moment of the teaching of Ehiye. It's the deepest moment of the teaching of Ehiye. And it's why, as we explained um, last year or two years, I don't remember, It's why Moshe Rabbeinu can never actually say that name to them. He never told them that name. He doesn't tell them that name because you can't tell someone that name. You can only expose for them 
that they have that power. He doesn't tell the Jewish people God's name is Ahia. He shows them. He shows them by his life and by in his, fi in his final moments of his life. This is how it can be. So these are, these are, these are uh, profound uh, elements of what it is to be uh, truly connected to the power of truth. And especially now when Mamash was still in the, the days of Kad Mala Olam before we enter into Rosh Hashanah. It's like, you know, this is the time for, 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 shedding, the, for shedding the klipot of, as we will momentarily learn when we start reading inside, of the Adam B'liya'al. So we'll come to know him in a moment. Okay. So, so, um, uh, I just want to point out, actually, that, that Moshe Rabbeinu is this. He says, V'haya ki avo alecha kol hadvarim ha'ele ha'bracha v'haklala ha'bracha v'haklala So the Or Chaim says, and then you'll v'shavta ad Hashem v'lokecha then you'll do tshuva. So the Or Chaim asks, like, you, you know, it sounded like they were going to do tshuva because of all the tough stuff that happens to them, you know, like all the bad things. And then, you know, then they'll, they'll notice where things have come to. And they'll do tshuva, not because of the bracha, but because of the klala, <laughs> because of all the klalos that they've experienced, the brachos and the klalos. So what's this about vayaki avoelcha, kol ha brachos v'ha klalos? So the Orechaim answers what he answers. He answers like, you know, they wouldn't know that the klalos are bahashgacha if they didn't, hadn't experienced brachos. But I think it's, it's much deeper than that. He's telling them. He's telling them. Means that because embedded in you are the brachos, it might be something you've seen. And by the way, it might be this man just, he saw something. He saw some movie where he saw two people looking into each other's eyes. And, and it's the marriage he wants. It might be something you've seen. Or it might be something you've never seen. But because those brachos are embedded in the nature of what you have as part of what you are, then therefore, when the klalos come on you, v'shavta ad Hashem elokecha, you can return to God. You hear that? You can return to the the the, uh, elu, the 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 God who is the ruach elokim avarachefet al pnei amayim who's who's above all of the all of the circumstances that have developed who is this who is the power of simple existence the pool of possibility from which then now a new life can be derived you hear that if there's no brachos then all the klalos in the world are not going to get you to do tshuva. If this gentleman and all of us is just being, just being bantered around by life with, with misery and, um, and pain and has no brachos to, to um, reconnect to from somewhere in his existence, Beat him up as much as you want with life. He, there's no v'shavta ad Hashem elokecha. There can't be v'shavta ad Hashem elokecha. Because there is no Hashem elokecha. There is no Lord your God in the personal sense of something which is a possibility for him. And um, um, I was exploring this yesterday with, with, uh, with, with um, my dear psychologist friend, right? And he said, so he, he suggested this thing. Well, you know, I mean, okay, he embedded this, embedded that, you know, but, but it could be, you know, that he saw that he, he was actually probably, you know, probably saw once, like, you know, two people looking into each other's eyes, or he saw a movie like that. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not really him. So that's just not so. 
<laughs> what? Exactly, exactly. This is what I said to him. I said to him, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait just one minute here. Why is it when he breathes deep, that's what he sees? Instead of more arguments, more arguments and more arguments. Why is it, like, like he will say, why is it that what he resonates with is that image? After all, the image he should be most resonating with is the one that he's actually created for himself because it's the one he's most comfortable in. It doesn't matter that he saw the brachos from the outside. The fact that, that what he saw from the outside, that's what spoke to him and that's what he dreams of means that that's something which is resonating inside in the deepest tenors of the, of the nature of who he is. It's very important to recognize, very important to recognize. I was with someone, but I don't know all the names, but on Shabbos I had over, you know, the, I mean, I must say, you know, bottom line, the most extraordinary people moved to Bad Ayim. <laughs> so, so this guy just moved in. His wife had a miscarriage. Never, so he's over by us on Shabbos. So five, five years postgraduate physics work with, I, I don't even remember the guy's name. Some of you might know who were into quantum physics. P.H. Net or something. P.H. Net. I've seen his name in books. You know, and I was with him at all the international conferences and the, the you know, the, the, the fighting, you know, at these conferences between the Jews, you know, like this, 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 this physicist to that physicist. And, you know, like a, crazy stuff. But one of, one of the theories which he, which I haven't read about, which he was telling me about is the, about the plasticity of the plasticity of DNA and of the and of the and of the, the epigenetics. Yeah, epigenetics, and 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 um, this is something which he was involved in, in researching and setting up labs and researching around Europe. And, and basically, there's this there's this image that they they develop. It's an image, you know. He talks about it as like a scientific fact that there are that there are um, there are resonances. There are there's like an inner music that is playing in in um, in off of these. Um, uh, in, in being emitted by these uh, genetic structures, and that based on these um, this kind of um, uh, harmonics that they emit, they uh, so to speak determine within their plasticity what environmental factors will affect genetic change and what environmental factors will not affect genetic change. Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever this means, right? You know, I'm not looking at this stuff, but um, but uh, but what was important to him after he, his listening to me on Chabas, I was talking about this thing, is that the the great mystery for the for for science, of course, is that you know the, the, here you have the genetic structure, which is the you know which is the which is the which is the most primary structure, and yet there's clearly something which is governing this. This primary structure is governing it to uh, make decisions as to what it's going to change into and what it's not going to change into. It's not just protecting a static identity. It's a plastic identity. But there's something more primal in there which is guiding it to uh, and, and, um, and uses this kind of a re reson you know, resonance uh, to to, to uh, 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 associate itself with that which it's meant to associate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? And, you know, I'm, I'm, t I'm a complete layman on this. But, but, um, and but. The scientists are so, like, surprised, like, wow. What? Something's governing. Beyond this. the chemics, beyond the chemistry of it? I mean, beyond, right. But, but what's governing it, what, you know, we know. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Not to be audited, right? but like, but but uh, of course, there's something that's that's present in there, which is a uh, a power of spirit, a power of presence. This this olam haba, this chelik and olam haba, that is there, which is this governing vision, which is what is beyond the specifics of the particular manifestation as it's manifest. Okay, that's. That's the that's that's the higher meaning of tshuva, as Eye is fed by the keter and the initial ratzon, the initial um, uh, imprint of what of what of what this is. This world is you're connecting now in that you're connecting not just to something 
which is personal. You're connecting something which is shared by all of humanity. I mean, who's not, who's not quelling when I talk about this guy saying, you know, we'll look into each other's eyes, we'll sense our vulnerability, we won't be afraid. I mean, who doesn't quell at that? That's not a, that's not a local vision. That's, that's, that's a universal reflection of the, of the imprint on, on, on what it means to be a human being. So A is the <coughs> personal dimension, which is a specific local manifestation of Keter, the Keter, which is the universal underlying. Right, the universal. Right, right, right. And the the A is both the 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 um, the drive that we have to evolve and become, and is guided by the Keter, which is the original imprint of what it is that we are aiming towards becoming. This is um, okay. I, I mean, uh, I, I want to show you some UK lashon. I mean, I, I uh, so we'll take a just take a few minutes. I, I obviously I'm very I apologize. I just apologize for coming late. And last week it took 45 minutes to get here. This week it took me an hour and a quarter. <laughs> it's like I don't know why. So so I'm sorry. Anyhow. Um, yeah, let's take a look inside in two in two places. But um, there, maybe there's some questions or uh, comments that people want to make. Yeah. Where does where does the lower Jew fit in, in terms of like if the higher Jew is Bina? Where's where Malchus? Malchus. Malchus is the what? Tea. A uh, tea. Uh, I I wouldn't mind a glass of water. Just like uh, yeah, thank you. Um, okay. <coughs> Yeah, and um, just to take a moment to 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 comment on that, uh, the, yes, the higher the higher tshuva is in bina and the lower tshuva is in malchut, and to put that in um, in in the language of personality, so the higher tshuva is the the higher tshuva is the person, and the lower tshuva is the personality. That's a language that I use, right? The higher tshuva is, is the self. And the um, the uh, lower truva is the is the um, is the uh, expressions of that self, and the various characteristics that become bound together into uh, into a personality. So um, so the lower truva will be dealing with the things that you know you've done wrong and want to get right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right. But the higher truva will be <coughs> dealing with the vision you have of what of what your person is. Of what your selfhood is, okay. So this is very crucial to understand that because you can go way off. You know, you can easily try to. You know, we spend much time exploring these issues, and you can easily spend much time, much of your life, grabbing and grasping at elements of your personality and like my characteristics and trying to fix them and working on this and working on that. But if there's no, if there's no, um, if there's no antecedent vision of what your self is, so then all that just becomes, you know, wrapped up in itself. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, thinking about the connection of bracha's access point to the bracha, which is the wellspring from which we can connect and renew. Nice. So you're, 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 you're offering that in the context of Moshe Rabbeinu saying, you know, yeah. yeah, you need those brachos. In order for the klalos then to be a uh, uh, a movement towards tshuva, and the bracha is maybe also mikva, mikva, mi <laughs> Okay, yeah. <coughs> okay. The mikva and the tikva, having hope. Hmm. Um, kind of view it as like the antecedent self is uh, kind of is the is in the resonating and in the like movement forward sense of possibility of connecting to it more so than in a particular blueprint of the vision because you're saying there may be some static thing that you whether it's the DNA or the particular wiring at this moment but it's like not that static thing it's that kind of the possibility is somehow resonating to the, the possibility so a question I have from that is like so how much then does the particular blueprint matter so he said we're looking into each other's eyes but like maybe it's actually touch like maybe you know like maybe it's not so it, at what point is there also some later stage of like refining the particular blueprint, 
how much does it matter what the vision looks like? Yeah, well, I, I, I think that's an excellent question, and it's a, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a somewhat, I think, uh, it's, it's part of the theoretical question. In terms of actually working with him, I think, I think we're doing really well to have that, you know, and um, I, uh, it might happen, it might happen that, um, let's make it weird, right? It might happen that she's blind. So he's never going to have that. So then we're going to want to, um, uh, we're going to want to move another layer of exposing, and, and what is that, what is that looking into each other's eyes for you? It's connecting, it's intimacy, it's, it's safety. Okay. Are there other ways that that could be had besides looking into each other's eyes because she can't see? Right. Is, that, is that what you're meaning? Oh, well, I'm, I'm putting it into like a, into a therapeutic context. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's very important, the point you're making, that, that uh, you know, lo igata ad ata el amlucha vela nachal. Don't be, don't be, uh, don't be uh, overly attached to a particular image, right? Because it's always beyond the image. Yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah. Put together a little mystery. Um, sitting in Tavim, you're standing up, and your head's in the like Shemayim. Like you're able to like. Yeah, that was what I meant. Thank you. Yeah, I mean. You I, give names uh, to the birds. Okay. And, and the, the, the first uh, uh, word with the Machin and Tavim, the magnitude is is Laof. Vayikra Adam. Shemot Lekol Vehema Laof Hashemayim. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Seder. But before we get to that, uh, I appreciate you <coughs> helping me make closure on what I was meaning when I was saying about Moshe Rabbeinu's emphasizing how we're standing, you know, we're standing vertical. Because that standing vertical, which is, which is the human, human form, is also the depiction of the human capacity to stand above his life and recognize that his life is not his life in the deepest sense. It's what he's currently living. But his life, that's something else. Right? That's his Olam Haba. And he can still see himself from that place because he's Nitzav. Atem Nitzavim Atem. Hayom Kulchem. Kulchem. You know that the Zohar says, and okay, we're going to have to stop here before we, but, but, to be, but just because we're right before Rosh Hashanah, you know the Zohar says Hayom is Rosh Hashanah. Every time it says Hayom in Tanakh, it's Rosh Hashanah, the Zohar says. Obviously, the Zohar doesn't mean that Moshe Rabbeinu was standing there on Rosh Hashanah because he wasn't. But what the Zohar means is that that's, that's Rosh Hashanah. Mm. That's Rosh Hashanah. To be Nitzav, mm. to be Nitzav, with, your, with your, 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 your head tall, to have not been crushed by, by what, what you've had to bear in life, your, your head's still tall. You're breathing deep. You're seeing from that place. That's Atem Nitzavim Hayom, Rosh Hashanah. So um, it's a bracha for all of us that um, that we access those brachot, that brecha, that 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 olam haba that's ours. That is waiting to shine its light into our own haza on that uh, that great day, which is today. Shana <laughs> Tova. Can I ask another question? Uh, yeah, yes, you can ask another question. Um, like, part of me, I just have this voice um, coming up when I'm hearing talking about like this primordial self which is above the ravages of time and the events of life and and I'm inspired by it and I relate to it but there's a part of me that just says like the most important thing for me is just to be a good person and I don't have to know about like the Elyon of these different things in order to just some just be simple and just like be a good Jew and that to me I'm more inspired by that, in a certain sense, than 
than like the highest of the high. Okay. And what's draw? And what's yeah? And what's driving you to want to be a good Jew? What would drive me to be a good Jew? To want to be a good Jew. Um, I guess you could say love. Um, like this idea to make my happy happy. Um, like you know. Okay. Well, that's also a vision. In other words, if you're not that yet, then that means that there's some some imprint that you have of something that you do want to be that is guiding you towards a better self. Correct? There's imprint of something. Something is guiding you towards wanting yeah. that. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>